Number three on our list is symbolic interactionism, which was extremely influential in the development of sociology in the second half of the 20th century and is still important today. But the thing is, uh, symbolic interactionism is not a single unified theory. It's more of a micro-oriented approach to sociology that provides a framework on which other contemporary sociological theories are built. Now, we generally trace symbolic interactionism back to the sociologists Herbert Bloomer and George Herbert Mead. And, you know, like everything else, this is a huge simplification, but uh, Bloomer and Mead's sociological perspective didn't look at macro issues. They weren't particularly interested in economics or the interplay between different social institutions. Instead, they focused on the way that individuals perceive the world around them and how that perception is conditioned by social interaction. And their approach was built on two foundational concepts. The first is that our behavior in any given situation is conditioned primarily by our beliefs about reality. Um, in particular, the subjective meaning that we ascribe to the individuals and objects around us in society. And the second is that that subjective understanding of the world is derived from social interaction. For example, um, think of a very simple wooden cross. On a basic level, right, a cross is just two pieces of wood, but it obviously carries a very significant symbolic meaning for Christians, more so, for example, than Hindus or Buddhists. So the way that people interact with a cross depends upon the subjective, culturally informed meaning that they ascribe to it as a symbol. And that subjective meaning doesn't appear out of thin air, it emerges through constant social interactions and affirmations. Um, having Christian parents, or having a lot of Christian friends, or going to Catholic school, for example, over time, those things gradually contribute to the development of a personal sense of symbolic meaning, which, in the language of symbolic interactionism, is socially constructed. And later generations of theorists expanded upon that understanding of the social construction of reality, applying it to just about everything imaginable. Most importantly, though, in my opinion, the ways in which informative aspects of our identities, things like ethnicity, gender, and class, are understood and symbolized differently in different cultural contexts. Um, now, what are some criticisms of symbolic interactionism? Um, well, the main one actually comes from within sociology itself. Uh, researchers that apply symbolic interactionist thinking use qualitative methods. They focus on one-on-one uh, -on -one interactions or on small groups of people, and they often don't have the uh, macro-oriented, almost mathematical perspective that you see in quantitative approaches to sociology. Um, in a sense, they're almost closer to anthropologists or ethnographers and the way that they um, uh, apply uh, and approach their research. And that's led critics to claim that symbolic interactionists basically miss the forest for the trees. They're uh, so focused on individuals and small-scale communication that their work fails to identify systemic issues and the ways in which social institutions can also shape people's behavior. It's also been criticized by more quantitatively oriented researchers because it focuses on subjectivity, on what individuals think about the world. It doesn't really offer an all-encompassing theory of the way the world is, um, aside, of course, from the idea that our perception of reality is socially constructed. Now, personally, I dislike these criticisms because I think they actually highlight the strengths of the theoretical movement rather than speaking to its weaknesses. And in any case, no one approach to social science has to propose a totalizing meta-theory that encompasses a society in its entirety. Um, I think by simply focusing on one-on-one -on -one interactions and the ways in which we develop and interact with our, our own symbolic worlds um, within sociology, symbolic interactionism provides a necessary qualitative counterpoint to more data-driven quantitative social science. But whether or not you agree with those criticisms, um, you'll find a lot of symbolic interactionist thinking in sociology, in grounded theory and Goffman's dramaturgy or in social constructivism, um, and even in entire disciplines like the sociology of emotion. In all of those things, symbolic interactionism is extremely important. Um, but if there are any students out there, I would offer a word of caution. Um, it's important to remember that microsociology is often at its strongest when it's put into a larger context and supplemented by forms of quantitative data. So you just watched an excerpt from our two-part series on the top 10 theories in the social sciences. If you're still watching, thank you very much. You should check the series out, and of course, like and subscribe. And if you found the video helpful, drop a comment below to let us know why. You can also check us out on Patreon, where we post scripts, comprehensive reading lists, study guides, and other written content for almost all of our videos. And if that sounds 
interesting and you'd like to support independent social science pedagogy on the platform, consider becoming one of our patrons, like these wonderful people right here. Thank you all very, very much. At the moment, I'm actually on a writer's retreat working on scripts for our major project this year, The Animated History of Tibet. You can find the trailer for that linked in the video description, or, you know, just find it over on the channel, but we'll be back at the end of the month with new content. In the meantime, I want to wish each and every one of you the very best of luck, and as always, never stop learning.